This episode of Ask the Buffalo is brought to you by Jack Threads. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo. I'm your host, John Rettinger. This is the show where you can ask me any question you've got from the wide world of technology and sometimes a little bit outside of it. And that's what this week is all about. On last week's episode of Ask the Buffalo, we gave you guys an office tour. We showed you around the Techno Buffalo offices where we spend almost all of our days. You met the staff that works out of this office. One of the things that I showed in that video was a document up on my office wall that was a court document. I mentioned the lawsuit that we were involved in. I said if you want to know more information about it, leave a comment down below, and a lot of you did leave a comment down below. So in this episode of Ask the Buffalo, I'm going to explain to you what the lawsuit was all about, what we fought for the better part of a year, and what ended up happening. This is Ask the Buffalo. Let's go and get started. <laughs> So about two years ago, uh, the Droid Bionic was getting ready to come out. Uh, it was announced actually at CES. We had a chance to even play with it. Uh, and then Motorola said, you know what, we're gonna wait on the Droid Bionic. And there was a few months where we didn't know what was gonna happen with it. Flash forward to about the September, uh, August timeframe, and Motorola was getting ready to announce a new updated Droid Bionic. It was a totally different phone, just had the same name. We got an anonymous email via our tips at technobuffalo.com saying, hey, I've got some shots of a collateral material that's going to be included with the Droid Bionic and it listed all of the specs. So they were sent over. We verified that they were indeed legitimate. I wrote and edited a post. Uh, one of our authors edited it as well. We gave the final approval, it went to our editor in chief, and then it got published. Turns out we were absolutely dead on with what the Droid Bionic was going to be. Uh, well, the printing house wasn't very happy about it, and I'll, and I'll leave their name out of it. Uh, you could search for this court case, though, it's everything's a matter of public record now that it's over. They were pretty much uh, upset about what had happened. Uh, so one of our other editors got an email a few days later saying, hey, do you ever reveal your sources? And our response was only with a court order. Uh, I think journalism is only as stable as the foundation it's on. And if sources don't feel like they can come forward anonymously and have that uh, anonymity that goes with it, I think journalism as a whole is going to fail, not just in the tech world. A few days later, Printing House tried to send us a court order. Uh, they actually tried to find me at my home, uh, but I had a hard time finding that. A Techno Buffalo has a registered agent that we use for our legal documents. It was sent to our registered agent. Registered agent got it to me. They essentially filed suit against us, uh, against Google, because our email is hosted with Google and they thought that Google would share the information. Uh, and they also filed suit against AT&T because the pictures, you can see a reflection, a little bit of a person or a phone. They thought the pictures were taken with a device that resembled the iPhone. And of course, the Verizon iPhone was already out at this time and pretty much every other device has that same shape. Shape. Um, and they wanted the information, they wanted to know the source's name. I contacted our attorneys, everybody knows what the attorney is, you pay them by the hour, and they are not cheap by the hour. But I contacted the attorney, uh, and we were very quickly informed that we had, uh, we were protected by federal shield laws. Uh, this particular printing house was in Illinois, so we were also protected by state shield laws in the state of Illinois, which actually has some of the strongest shield laws. And also by First Amendment rights, the freedom of speech, and the protection of the press. It seemed pretty open and shut. Uh, so we don't obviously talk about politics, uh, what's going on in the world, but we do talk about technology, and that is considered news as far as I was concerned. We're always on CNBC, we're on Fox News, uh, Wall Street Journal has a tech section where they cover exactly the same stuff that we do. USA Today uh, has the same thing, and every major newspaper covers technology. So I figured, you know what? We're good, open and shut case. Google essentially sent a very nice letter back, which the gist of it was, we're Google, you probably don't want to piss us off. Google was dropped from it. Uh, AT&T said close to the same thing. AT&T was dropped from it. Uh, so we filed a motion back saying, not a chance, we are not going to tell you our source. You can take that information and I'll see you in court. Many, many, many lawyer hours and many documents were put together. And essentially the case that we said was, we are journalists. We have journalistic procedures. We have steps we go through before we publish. We don't just, don't just publish information uh, without you know, checking and verifying sources and we sent it to the judge, and it seemed pretty open and shut to us. The judge disagreed. This particular judge is located in Illinois, and the judge said, nope, you have to reveal the source, to which I said, nope, not gonna reveal the source. Uh, on a personal note, I was very prepared to take this as far as I needed to to not reveal the source. I would have probably gone to prison for a short period of time 
uh, to not reveal the source. That's how strongly I felt about this. Uh, if we had lost this case, it would have been a huge, huge dent for not just journalism as a whole, but specifically the consumer electronics journalism. Uh, could you imagine if sites didn't feel safe publishing anonymous sources? We would never know what was coming, whether you agree or disagree with all the information getting out there. Uh, it's very important that sites have the ability to do that and to do that free of persecution. Um, so for our industry and my own livelihood, I could not let us lose this case. The judge disagreed. We thought we were going to have to go to appeals. And before you can go to appeals, you have to file something called a motion for reconsideration, where essentially you ask the judge, dude, come on. We filed that motion. Uh, we put in new information in that time. Huffington Post had won a Pulitzer Prize. We put in all kinds of other information about blogs being considered journalists. And it's really the first, one of the first cases that was, uh, had a ruling. I have friends that run other sites and they were getting emails and uh, cease and desist letters from other companies that were stating Techno Buffalo uh, versus you know, this company uh, as precedent. So it really was, we were treading very dangerous water. The story was picked up in all the main Chicago papers, the Tribune, uh, for example, and a lot of national uh, publications. Perhaps the judge saw it, maybe he didn't. And on his motion for reconsideration, he actually reconsidered uh, and said, okay, Techno Buffalo does qualify. As journalists, uh, they did follow journalistic steps. They've got journalistic procedures uh, in place, and they are totally protected. They do not have to reveal their source. And this was the better part of a year that it took to get to this point. I sort of condensed everything. And for a year, we fought. So we had a few options at that point. Uh, I could either countersue the printing house to recoup legal fees, which would have been a long, long battle and would have taken more legal fees, and who knows what would have happened. Uh, or we could have just let it go there. So the printing house said, okay, we've fought this long enough. It's been a year. We spent a lot of money. We burned through a good portion uh, of our capital to try and defend this. That's how strongly uh, I felt about it. Eventually, the printing house said, we're not going to file an appeal. We're not going to come after you again and have to defend this if you don't come after us for legal fees. It seemed amicable enough and the case was settled and over with. It was a really long, hard fought year. Uh, I didn't share what was going on sort of as it was happening because uh, in all honesty, it was too overwhelming for me. Uh, there were many, many sleepless nights. I was worried that cops were gonna show up at my house to serve me with more papers. My wife was very concerned. It really affected my life and could have potentially affected my livelihood and the livelihood of everybody at Techno Buffalo. Uh, it was just, it was a very nerve wracking year for me. It was very uh, tenuous and I'm really happy that we won. So let me take a minute from talking about legal stuff to thank our friends and sponsors at Jack Threads. You see my wardrobe? I don't like to go shopping, but I like to have new clothes. Jack Threads is the perfect solution. Only suckers pay full price. You love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but hey, wasting all your cash on them? Listen up. You can score these premium brands up to 80% off every day. If you're gonna go buy them anyway, you might as well save 80% and not have to leave your chair. There's a new invite-only shopping club for guys called Jack Threads, serving up street, skate, and surfwear brands at prices that will melt your brains. There's a wait list to join, but if you go to jackthreads.com slash tech, no, you can sign up today. You can get the latest clothes that are out there. If you want to look like our very own cameraman, Ralph, you can pick up the Horatio jacket in red checker pattern. It looks pretty awesome. You don't have to leave your chair to get it. It's one of my favorite things. Go ahead and check it out at Jack Threads. Journalism is changing. It's moving away from printed press to online. And if there aren't clear definitions about what qualifies as press or what doesn't, I think journalism as a whole is going to be uh, doomed and perhaps that's too macro and we're just a very, very tiny, tiny little pea in a very large journalism pod, but I still felt strongly enough I had to defend it. If you don't have principles, if you don't feel strongly about something in this world, then you're going to stand for nothing. Uh, and I felt something that I had to defend. So that was the course of action that we took. That was a story behind that piece of paper up on my wall. If you want to search for the case, you're welcome to. You can go for the Chicago Tribune and look up Techno Buffalo and you can see the articles that were written there about it. You can get more information. Uh, out of respect, I'll leave all the other parties' uh, names out of it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Ask the Buffalo. We're back every week with brand new questions. We'll have tech questions coming at you next week. Check out technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. I'm John Renger. I'll see you next video.